three, six, seven. Daniel Devoris has flopped the top set. Michael, American Michael, has a gut shot and a flush draw. But Chino's gonna bet. So we're gonna kick off day two here. Here's our featured table. Michael Del Vecchio, Chino Reem, Roberto Romanello, uh, Party Poker Pro, Michael so Soiza, Daniel Devoris, High Stakes Boss, and Julian Menhart. I know Daniel Devoris, uh, I know Chino Reem, I know Robert, Roberto Romanello. The rest of the table I haven't heard of before, but we're going to get some of the reads on them as we go through the tournament here. So if you're just tuning in, we're on no delay. We can talk in the chat. We can sort of have some conversations about what's going on. But this tournament is not happening right now in the world. This tournament happened in November of 2019. Uh, at the time, it was broadcast on Poker Go, um, but it is now released for the public to sort of check it out on the Party Poker Live YouTube channel. So I'm just recasting it and like because I never saw it at the time. So we're going to go through it and, and check it out. And if you haven't seen it, you'll probably enjoy it too. So that's the situation, man. Just hold a few less live events and put some money towards software from Miko Dan. Miko Dan. I mean, I don't think that's... Uh, I don't think it's like a lack of money, dude. It's a, Structurally, it's a difficult thing to do. You know what I mean? It's just a hard thing to do structurally. I don't think it's live poker's fault, you know what I mean? <laughs> Love these streams. Lucky 13 poker. What's up, man? How's it going? All right, we're going to go to the flop first hand here of the hour. Now, the thing with these streams is that we um, there's commentary on them. In an ideal world, there'd be no commentary, just table sounds. But I have to kind of mix the volume, so you're not going to hear too much from the table. I'll try and get you a bit. Julian's going to continue here with the 10-6. From the small blinds, we can see Michael has the king three with the, fair to say the, player with the least experience on backdoor this club draw as well. Ultimate sweat revisit? No, nah, dude. No more. Uh, no more fitness prop bets for me, my friend. I'm happy to go with things uh, my own pace. You know. Uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, it was amazing period of life very intense but not interested in taking on any more bets i mean of course there's a number for for something but the number would be more than 10x what it was to even do the same thing so anyways uh bet and call we go to the turn which is a two of spades but he is going to give another go 120 going bigger julian goes for another barrel 120,000 now i believe they started with a million in this tournament with a king of course will be going nowhere I think they started with a million, and we can see both of these players, given it's day two, are not actually that deep here. Michael looks to be a natural eight pro. I haven't heard of Michael before, but... On the river. river is an eight of clubs. So we can see Julian has nothing. It's just the 10 high here. Uh, does block a lot of the good hands, though, as well, with the 10. So will he continue or not? And Michael with the top pair and a bad kicker. No, blind versus blind here has got to feel okay about the situation. Like, I'm not worried if I'm Michael. But then again, this is a 10,000 buy-in. This is the first hand we've seen of this coverage for day two. Like, he doesn't know what Julian's up to. I'm sure they don't have a history. The trigger. Julian goes in. for the shove. First hand, really <laughs> all in shove for 395,000. That's 5,000 more than the pot. And Michael's put to the test here. I mean, flops top pair. Turn is a total brick, right? Turn changes nothing about the situation. The eight of clubs, you don't think is going to change things against a bet, bet jam. You know, unless like king eight. But you're behind King 8 anyways. But then again, Michael's also got to think like, hey, does this random person go for a triple barrel bluff first hand mm. of day two? Each player receiving all in for all his chips. Like, should I call down here with a weak kicker king? 
if you have some sort of reads, if you know something about your opponent, you can have a little bit more insight as to what to do here. But there's no information for Michael. He's just got to, like, in, in my opinion, revert to the math in this spot, which is, like, is our hand high enough up? Is it a decent enough hand to call, given what Julian is saying? And I think yes, but I can see the cards. <laughs> I can see them. Does Julian make this play with just one just one pair? Does he make it with strong kings, or is it always going to be two pair plus? And if it is just two pair plus, then obviously he'll start calling with... What a crazy first hand of this day two, though, man. Wow. Such a bad one. All right. Bit of a moment in time here. Oh, call. He does there it is. The cool Julian oh. is gone. Credit wow. Julian. First hand of day two. Julian has busted a 575,000. Michael, feature table on day two. that's a good start of the day. There it is. Let's get a wider look here. Roberto <laughs> Romanella from Wales. Party Poker Team Pro. Chino Reem as well. On the table. Hello, FaZe Johand. What's up, my friend? Welcome. Welcome to the live stream. There it is. Michael Soyuz, uh couple chips should be an interesting feature table though when you put Chino Reem on the table I mean based on my perception of, of the guy fairly aggressive Daniel Devoris I would assume is the best player at this table he's got 810,000 chips so not much room to work with but is a guy that plays the 100,000s that plays the 50,000s the 25,000 dollar tournaments I actually had the opportunity to uh, play with him or meet him, I think, in Calgary once at a 2,500 WPT. That was a long time ago. I played with his Michael Kai as well, actually. I forget which table I played with, but it would have been like a PCA type event or an EPT or something. Michael raised it up to 70,000. I forget where I played with him. It might have been the uh, PSPC, actually, this past year. Roberto's going to call for 70,000 with the threes, sitting on 1.1 million. Michael coming off that big win, folds, and now Chino Reem in the big blind with 10 5 of hearts. He's always gonna play hand. What an attempt, right? Yeah, giving it a go. Original E. To the flop. 6 6 9. What a meme. Everyone is missed, and Roberto has the best hand as of now with the sixes and threes. Mr. X-Men says, what do you think about that, Jan? The last hand. Would you pull the trigger first hand of the day, too? I don't think so. I think I would just shut down at some point. I don't think there's any need to really go too crazy. Um, just, like, really straightforward, like, not forcing the action kind of poker, I think, works well in these big live events. At least that's from my experience. Just, like, very straightforward. doesn't even have to be very creative. Nice hand there for Roberto Robinello. <laughs> Soiza, uh, probably the best, don't you think, Jamie? I don't know a ton about Soiza, so hit me up with some info on that one. Who's Soiza? Michael's going to raise it up in the hijack with King Deuce suited. Roberto. Looking down at ace seven offsuit in the cutoff. It's one of those hands where you see it and you're like, hmm, I could make a move here. I could play something, but it plays so poorly post flop. So, really, like, do I three better or not is the question. Now, action on Michael, who took down our first pot of the day with the ace ten of diamonds. And the big blind, I believe, is 35,000 here. Cool. Michael will call. Happy to allow the blind in here with Chino in the small blind. Looks like another player is moving into the table here, but an action on Chino Reem. Michael uh, Soiza, natural eight guy. Okay, I don't know anything about uh, Soiza. 
But I would put him on the same sort of line as Daniel DeVorce. I feel like Daniel DeVorce is in those top 50, top 100 tournament players in the world, is my guess. I don't know where I would rank him, but... Um, but maybe Soiza is on the same line as well. I, d I just honestly had never heard of Soiza before. Uh, but thanks for the context, anyways. Eight five four on the flop. Both players have missed. And if I'm Michael in this spot, I actually like betting, perhaps. But he does go for the check. What's tough about Michael's hand is it's got some good things going. It's three to a straight. It's three to a flush. It's an overcard. It's definitely not good enough to check call. Uh, so I wouldn't mind, like, even though you shouldn't see but that often, King Deuce suited seems like an okay one. Um, as played, though, it goes check, check. It's a sing of di six of diamonds in the turn. Michael, we can see, still has the best hand. They're both named Michael. That's confusing. <laughs> American Michael is going to take it down with the bet. So he's also played the Triton Millions. Oh, okay, cool, man. I need to check that out. I need to check that out. Uh, I actually want to send an email to Triton and see if maybe I could recast some of their stuff, man, because it'd be really cool to go through that, you know? So we're going to continue here and start a day two coverage six-handed as we did lose a player already. But it looks like a new player is coming into the sixth seat, so we'll see. Roberto Romanello. Do you guys remember the millions online? That happened in December, so obviously the patches are on there because it was in a couple weeks from when this tournament was. Man, that was so hype, dude. We, we fired two bullets at the millions online. Oh, what a sick one, man. What a sick tourney. Chino going to raise it up with the ace-5. On the button. Michael looks down at ace-7. And looks to be sizing at a call. There it is. Triton best event by far. It is very entertaining. I think it's already a very strong bear end. I really enjoy watching it as well. All right, we go to the flop here. Jack, Jack, eight. Both players have pretty much the same hand here. Pretty much the same hand. East, Jack, Jack, eight, seven. And East, Jack, Jack, eight, five. But, you know, any card over a seven is going to chop it up. Chino is just going to take it down with the bet. I'm surprised by the ace, five fold, to be honest. Um, or the ace, seven fold. Because Jack Jack eight, both players are going to miss quite often, and it's an interesting spot to sometimes attack the board there with the paired board. But all right, we got a new player coming in here. Big B, Jerry Wong, starting with a million chips, thirty three big blinds. I don't know if you could buy into day two on this event or not. I'm not sure, but here we go. Would you be playing any live events in February from Mr. X Man? No, dude. Just the stream and online for me, man. Just the stream and online for me. A new register, Jerry Wong, and another formidable opponent joining this table. Mike on the small lines, gonna limp it in for thirty thousand. Roberto. Two thousand and sixteen. Checks his option to the flop. King Jack eight. Both players have missed. Roberto has a little something here. Three to a straight, three to a flush. So like some backdoor fun, you know. There's a lot of fun turns, but it's gonna go check check. Turn is a queen. So this is one of those cards that gives Roberto a draw. It's not a great draw. Uh, we can of course he has the best hand for now. With the ten high. And it goes check check. River is an ace. Roberto has made the hand. Unlucky for him, he's not going to get any action here because Michael has 5-3. But it looks like Michael's putting together a bluff here. Does bet 65,000. What's up, Z Kolbster? How you doing, my friend? Welcome, welcome. What's up, Tessie Wissy? We are live, me and you, but this tournament has already happened. So we're rebroadcasting with a bit of commentary. Uh, this took place in November. Ten thousand millions online. 
Um, but yeah, me and you are on no delay, so I'm watching it for the first time. It looks like MTT service is back in action, by the way, guys, and everything is working again. If you're playing tournaments on Party Poker today, it should be good to go. Roberto raised it up to 130,000. Michael is... Look at this. Michael Three betting to 270,000. Quick call. On the river. Roberto having none of it. Ay, so yeah. Roberto with the straight, man. Bet three bet. Michael trying to get fancy there, man. Goes for the bet three bet on the ends. Making a move. That's a wild one. All right. Okay. Nice hand, Roberto. I'm surprised by Michael's bet three bet. I think he will fold his five high, yeah. It's a good chance. Good possibility. <coughs> oh, it's on me. Sorry, guys. I fold. Chino Reem going to fold the King 7 there. See, I wish we could turn up that player sound. I really do. Daniel Devoris in the cutoff of the Queen 5 of Hearts here. You have like 800 right now. Is it up to 60,000? Roberto on the small blind. King three is out of the way. Pulls around to Michael in the big blind with the queen and the queen. That's a disastrous hand for Daniel to see. I mean, a huge hand here. But how does Michael play it? We can see against a three bet, he's not likely to get a ton of action. Uh, just an all-in shot for Michael and Daniel folds. There it is. I get anxious playing twenty dollar tournaments. I can't imagine ten thousand three hundred from looking for you to win. Yeah, man. I mean that would uh, that'd get the heart racing. I've played a few of them myself personally, but it, you know what I've found in my poker career playing ten years or so, it's just relative. Like when I first got started, I remember a three dollar rebuy tournament that I was in. Right, three bucks. I was nearing the final table, and my adrenaline was through the roof, man. My hands were shaking. I was freaking out. I was texting my friends, right? It's huge. So it's just relative. Like, these guys have been playing poker, most of them, long enough to where it feels just like that $3 tournament fell for me, you know? And I can say that uh, about myself as well. Like, I, I've played a few $5,000 live events, and I don't get nervous for those anymore. I don't. Not that the money wouldn't hugely change my life and the dream isn't less real for the win. It's just you get used to it kind of, you know what I mean? Michael going to raise it up the cutoff with 10 of hearts. Uh, we're not sure. Mystery card. Roberto on the button, going to fold the king nine. Michael in the small blind, seven five of spades will fold. And Chino Reem in the big blind. Looking down at the jack six of clubs. Is interested so in seeing a flop. Cutoff is going to get fielded by Chino in the big blind. Flop is 10, 5, 4. Michael has got the best of it. We know that for sure. With the 10 mystery. Continuation bed, take it down. All right. We'll never know. So they both had a plush there using the Ace of Hearts. Is that then a split pot or is there other cards from Tissy Wissy? So it's just the best five card hand. So uh, I forget the flush situation, Tissy Wissy, but let's say like. If there was ace, king, queen, jack, ten of hearts on the board, like a royal flush, and you held seven, six of hearts in your hand, then you would chop with whoever's playing. But let's say it's the other way. You had the ace, king of hearts in your hand, and the board was ten, nine, eight, three, deuce of hearts. Well, in that situation, you would win. You would beat someone else because you're the higher hearts play. You know what I mean? So you use your two cards and the five cards on the board to make the best hand possible. That's about it. ZX Dakev, drop of the 54-month Risa. Let's go, man. Four and a half years in the house. Let's get some love in the chat for that resubscription. Thank you, dude. Really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Roberto Romanello with the Kings in the cutoff. All right. If the ace is shared, though, so yeah, you may share the ace, right? But if if your other card plays in your hand, then you would beat your opponent's hand. So it 
you have to use all five cards, and all five cards are considered Tissy Wissy, so... Who was it? If, let's say, for example, a board is uh, Ace of Hearts, and then Six of Hearts, Five of Hearts, Four of Hearts, Three of Hearts, right? And one person has the King of Hearts, and another person has the Jack of Hearts. The King of Hearts is going to win, because they would have an Ace King, Six, Five, Three, or whatever. The other person would have an Ace Jack, Six, Five, Three. Flush, so... Yeah, this five card in. No problem. Is this live? We are live, me and you, Mr. Burns. But uh, this tournament was played in November 2019. Uh, the Caribbean Poker Party it was originally broadcast on Poker Go, but now it's released on the Party Poker uh, YouTube channel, so we're just doing some re-commentary because I've never seen it before. Whoa, Jerry! Look at this, Jerry! This is disaster for Roberto. Top two pair for Jerry, who's sitting on 900,000 here. Roberto only has 1.6 million. 185,000 in the pot. I really doubt Roberto can get away from this hand. It totally depends how Jerry plays it. If Jerry just calls here, potentially the hand can change on the turn. We could see an ace, which might slow down Roberto. We could see another club, which may slow down Roberto a little bit. But it's, it's just going to be so hard to get away from kings here. It goes bet and call. Okay, so we're going to go to the turn. There's 475,000 in the middle. Ten of spades. This might be of help to Roberto. It is a scary card for him in that a queen jack, a jack seven, a seven six, a uh, ten nine, a ten eight, now beats him. Not just the nine eight or the sets. But then again, he's still got kings here, and his opponent only has seven hundred fifty five thousand left. There's almost five hundred k in the pot. It's just I don't know if he can get away from the hand. I can't fault him for the move here. Shoving a call, two pair against the Kings. Roberto's going to need a deuce or a 10 or a king. There it is. Eight outs. 18% going to the river. What's up, Raisinator? How's it going, man? Good to see you in the house. 18%, eight outs. Deuce, 10, or king. Seven is not going to get it done. The 8-9, two pair from Jerry is going to double up. Roberto Romanello now, Party Poker Pro. Down to just seven hundred thousand. Tough one. Over twenty big blinds. Tough one. Start of twenty twenty is good, man. I got to hang out with my family for eleven days. I hadn't seen my dad in a year and a half, and my mom in a year, in person. So it was really nice to hang with them. I got to see my brother Matt as well. It's been about six months since I saw him. Um. So yeah, we got to do some touristy stuff here in in Scotland, a bit in London. Met my fiance's family, like my family and their family met and stuff. So it was really good, man. But excited to be back at the grind, you know. I've got a new player moving in the table here. We're going to get the info in a second, I think. There it is. Arthur Conan from France on a million chips. Looks like just registering the tournament now. So let's see. We're going to talk about the 2x pot size shove from Bleak Zoning. Yeah, we could have talked about it at the time. The thing is, it's a very draw-heavy board, so he just overbet slightly. Like, he had 1.8x pot or whatever. You could bet smaller, but you're going to have to bet call with kings is what he figured, so, like, might as well put max pressure on. Whoa, the new player, Arthur. Looking down at ace-king in the hijack. What a start. Welcome. Welcome back. Raise it up with this ace-king. Gino folds the nine deuce. Jerry in the small blind is going to fold the eight five as well. How about Daniel Divorce in the big blind? Looking down at Queen Deuce offsuit. Not a great hand. Queen Deuce offsuit. Gives it up. There it is. Uh, Mr. Bojangles in the chat. Uh, just came back from Vegas and played a couple hundred dollar tournaments. One decision I didn't know what was best if you have some advice. I had Jack Jack on the button. Big stack bets under the gun plus two, and then short stack goes all in. Do I shove to try and get the big stack out, or do I fold? Well, I think you did the right thing with Jackson playing, right? Um, it depends how many chips you have. So if you have a 1,000 big blinds, it's going to be a different answer than if you have a typical tournament stack of, like, 30 big blinds or something. My move there with Jax is going to be to go all in. Um, you know, you are risking running to queens, kings, aces, and you're going to be flipping sometimes against ace, king, ace, queen. But jack, jack is a very strong hand. Um, 
Now, if you're very deep, let's say you're 200 big blinds deep or something like that, and the original Razor under the gun plus two is also like very deep, you can actually call the all in. And then if the original Razor decides to shove, you could fold. That's an option. But it, all of that depends on stack size, Bojangles. So without that information, you probably did the right thing, in my opinion. You and Matt play any poker? Not while we were here, man. No. No. Daniel Divorce at the small blind here with the king-queen. Jerry with the raise on the button as well. The 65,000. Big blind it being 30,000. 15, 30K. And uh, Daniel Devoris going for the all-in. 615,000. Back on Jerry, who we see is going to fold. Moving on. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's not a bottomless pit yet. <laughs> I see the flip flops for Roberto Romanello. You can tell you're in the the Caribbean when you got the flip flops at the table, man. <laughs> it's gotta be nice. Gotta be nice. I did miss going to the Caribbean because I'd I'd been to the PCA four years in a row, so I kind of miss not having that tropical. Uh, just a bit of sun in in the early January this year. <laughs> I could have gone in November, but that's okay. Chino Reem in the hijack with Jack 10 suited. It's going to raise it up to 70,000. Chino, 70K from the hijack. Roberto Romanello in the big blind. This is probably an all-in moment, although he can call as well. So it's up to him. Both are going to be profitable options. Which is more profitable depends on Chino Ream's strategy. And I think this is the right move, given Chino Ream is a aggressive player, or is known as an aggressive player. It's better to move all in and force him to fold out hands like this, which are pretty decent, or call off hands like this. To gamble or not. It's a really pretty hand. Looks like he's thinking about a gamble here, though, the Jack-10 of hearts, which would be great news for Roberto with the ace-10. <laughs> Roberto yeah. desperately cool now. He knows it's Jack-10 suited. I feel like these guys are giving off a lot of body language and vibes, huh? You know, I'm with you, actually. It's gridlock. It's easy for us when we can see the cards and that, like, what we're thinking is self-perpetuating. You know, it's like it's it's reassuring itself. So it's it's easy when we get the whole cards face up, but I tend to agree that Especially when you, know I have Jack you are getting those sort of looks at this table where you're kind of getting a sense for strength and weakness at times. I'm with you on that, man. What's up, Arnold SFC? Cheers, man. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to be playing some online poker tonight yeah, is the plan. We're going to do a bit of commentary here for the day two of the Caribbean. Um... Probably do about half of the day two coverage. It is nine hours in total day two. So I'll probably do about four and a half hours and then play a bit tonight. Is my guess. Try and get through to day two of the Party Poker Million. This is the last Party Poker Million um, on the schedule. It is no longer staring next week. So, yeah. <laughs> We'd like to get through to day two of the last yeah. event, you know. Maybe win the last event. That'd be all right. Tino Reem with another big hand here. Ace Jack gonna raise. Steaming on a stream. Did you just buy in? Yeah. Okay. I got better than Jack High. Why are the millions stopping? Not the not the millions live tournaments. The Party Poker so, Million on li like the two fifteen Party Poker Million, which is every Sunday. It never hit the guarantee, man. So I think something else is going to take its place. Though something else is going to happen. But uh, here, let me open up a lobby like this one. You know, the one million guaranteed. Yeah. But they, I don't think it hit the guarantee once, at least to my recollection. I don't think it actually hit that one million guarantee. 
the mini million did, but you know it's tough when when a tournament is like three months old and it's still not hitting the guarantee. Like you're just a lot of money is is leaving the site. You know what I mean? Chino, third hand in a row here, raising it up. Michael in the big blind, looking down at a pretty decent queen eight of diamonds. You gotta feel okay about this hand. He's gonna call. Flop is ace, queen, nine. Chino with a quick bet. 80,000. And Michael with second pair and a backdoor diamond draw. I don't think he's going to go anywhere here. I certainly wouldn't be. Definitely has enough of a piece, I think, to see a turn. Nine of clubs on the turn. So this is typically a much better card for Michael's range than it is for Chino's range. And why is that? You know, like, why is this better for Michael? We can see the whole cards, but pretend you can't. Michael is going to have more nines than Chino does here. Michael called in the big blind, so he's going to have a hand like 9-5 suited, 9-6 suited, 9-7 suited, 9-8 off suit, 9-10 off suit. Like, all those hands. Whereas Chino, raising under the gun, does not have those, right? So that's typically why that card is advantage for Michael. Now, as we can see, it goes check, check on the turn. We know that Michael already had the best hand and Chino didn't have anything. I'm just explaining, like, how that turn card changes the dynamic of the hand. And on the river nine, all that analysis we did on the turn almost disappears because it makes it so unlikely that the big blind has a nine because there's three on the board. You know, so it just really cuts down on things, makes it difficult for Michael to have a nine. Um, so that's, I guess, another good card for Chino on the end there. But Michael does bet 60,000 here. Going for a bit of thin value with the pair of queens. And Chino has relented. You can see in his face, right? Like he's not raising. So he's kind of just like, do I call or fold? Kind of vibe. <laughs> King Jack in the muck. Scooby, good luck to you as well, my friend. A good value bit for Michael. He's going to pick up the chips. Doesn't get called, but fair enough. So the Sunday Millie canceled on party. After this week, it will be, yeah, Zeewee. This is the last week of the Party Poker Million. I mean, yes, it was a lot of money if it doesn't hit the guarantees, but there's ever a tournament in poker history that got it instantly popular. Pretty much, Muggy W. Yeah, if you think about, like, KO Series, Power Fest, um, you know, like, if you think about PokerStars, for example, which is the big, biggest site, like, they never miss the guarantee, like, ever, you know? So all their tournaments launch, they hit the guarantee. And that's the thing, you know? Like, still, you could you could put that $215 tournament with a 700000 guarantee on a Sunday, but then it's not the Party Poker Million anymore, so it doesn't work, right? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, it launched big. It was already pretty big. To get 850,000 or 900,000 in a 200 buy-in is a lot of people, you know, but it's not big enough to be the party poker million. Just costing too much money. You know what I mean? Yeah. But don't worry, there's going to be something else happening. There's going to be another exciting Sunday tournament that'll come up. Here's a spot, man. Roberto is... Uh, this is not good for Roberto. Very lucky that Michael just calls for Roberto. Oh, I thought he had nines. He has nine eight suited. Okay, never mind. Nine eight suited is a different story. You can get away from that hand. Chino Reem now in the big blind with the queen jack of hearts. We can see Michael has it. Has uh, the second best hand in Nolan Maholdem, the king and the king. Beautiful hands. To the flop, which is 10 8 4. Roberto has flopped middle pair. Chino Reem has a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. Michael has the overcard here. Goes check, check, and Roberto checks. Gets the free card, which is good. Very interesting card here. Six gives Roberto not just middle pair now, but middle pair and a gut shot. Chino Reem still has that gut shot and two overcards, and Michael still has the overpair. scary when you consider Chino's field from the big. A lot of pair plus straight draw combos here. $215,000 
200,000. Chino calls. And now Roberto's got a decision to make. It's 200,000 to win 670. He's got second pair and a gut shot. Chino going kind of wild here. The bet call, to be honest. Because Chino's got a player behind to worry about. And he just does have a queen high at this point, right? Very much on the cusp here. He only has 690 behind. Knows he can be ahead. Thinking about it, deciding. I mean, it's a tough one for him. There's the shove from Roberto. I'm gonna ship it in here for seven hundred thousand. Now action back on Michael, who could actually is in pretty difficult spot for Michael. You gotta think. Check, check, check on the flop. The board's got pretty connected. Goes bet, call, raise with a player behind. So Michael doesn't like this spot, but he does have kings. He's underrepped his hand in a big way. He's still beating a lot of things here, so it's quite interesting as to what he's gonna do. Roberto could win this hand. If Michael folds, Roberto's going to win, right? It's pretty crazy. Roberto's in just a really difficult spot because it's almost like, do you want to, do you want to call there and then leave yourself four hundred ninety thousand on the river, with you know like the pot being double that? Or do you just want to shove here and put hands like this to the test, right? Put a weak 10 to the test, uh, as well as sometimes protect yourself when you have the best hand. But the thing we have to think about from Roberto's point of view is he can't expect Chino Ream to have much worse of a hand here. Wow. Well, now he's got the best hand. Incredible. It's a semi-bluff, and it worked. I don't think Chino can call. It's another 390,000, 490,000. 695, 90, 490. <coughs> it's another 490,000 to win 1.3 million. It's two and a half to one, but you got to feel you're pretty trash here. Like, you might only have four outs. It's pretty sick. Well, great move by Roberto. Wow. Wowzers, man. What a hand that was. Roberto Romanello, what a legend. Scooping up the chips. What's new? Well, Michael's fold aided by the fact he had... That's a weird spot on the turn. Stacks are so... Ugh, they're so jammed up, man. What do you do? He gets the chips. That's it. That's it, man. Muggy W says, do you think millions uh, ever come back if traffic grows? These, the party poker million on Sunday... It could, man. It could. But, I mean, you just we just need more and more players to play, right? We just need the site to continue growing, and then if it will, then we're good. Why ain't you at the table, man? Because I got a Twitch stream, Big Ben. I got a channel here on Twitch, dude. No live tournaments for me. Only the online commentary variety, dude. This Twitch channel is important. Yo, Big Ben. Good to see you, though, man. Good to see you. I just clued in as to who you were, by the way. I was like, oh, man. I read the comment, and I was like, oh, yeah, Big Ben. Do you remember the Big Ben tournament on Full Tilt, man? Do you remember that one? I don't know if you were playing back then, but, like, after Full Tilt Poker relaunched, they had a tournament called the Big Ben. That's always what I think about when I hear Big Ben now. <laughs> Will you be playing today? Yeah, I'm going to play tonight. Eric uh, Scarfolt. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of commentary here today, too. But then we'll we'll fire up a bit later. Good streams last weekend, by the way, at Poker Stables. Thanks, Ed. Some of you may have missed. I was doing WPT Russia commentary as the commentator that's commentating this as well. But he was 
uh, going to do it on the weekend. He had a difficulty with his internet connection and doing it remotely. So they asked me if I could help out. So I did, yeah. So Friday and Sunday ended up doing some commentary for that stream. I never played the big band. I knew about it th then. The kitchen sink was more my thing. Oh, yeah, dude. Fuck. Kitchen sink. That was a good one after the relaunch. <laughs> well, I'm not sure they will believe him. I certainly couldn't believe it when it happened. It's a bad situation. I can turn up the table sounds a bit, but then we get the commentary, which mushes. So we'll just... We'll try it a bit. We'll see how it goes. OMG, you said my name. Starstruck now. What's up? Eric, man. Eric... Scarfold. In hindsight. Easy, dude. I'm gonna have to practice though, because it sounds Scandinavian <laughs> to me. Is it Scandinavian? What was the comp on full tilt where you got stupid bonuses for winning both? And it's gone. Is the daily double was one of them, but that was back in the day, right? Yeah, you played both at the same time, and there was like a shared prize pool between them. That was a cool promotion though. I really enjoyed that. Daily Dollar, I remember running deep in that one back in the day, too, man. That was a good one. The Daily Dollar. I remember being down to the final 100 and just being so hyped in the Daily Dollar. So hyped up. Norwegian, you were close. There we go. Could you just dub in some chip sounds and keep it muted? Maybe I should, man. What I'd like to do, so my grand plan, as I've kind of been given the okay to like, okay, you can you can recast some of our YouTube videos, basically, from Party Poker. I'm like, all right, sweet. But my plan is, if people like this sort of content and it works, I can hopefully get them to send me the videos without the commentary so that it's a clean feed, right? And then I'll be able to just blast those chip sounds for you and table banter. But just me, you know what I mean? I really hope we can do that, but we don't have the asset yet. Daniel Divorce is going to limp in with a 4-3. We see that uh, Michael looks down at the 10s, raise it up, and Daniel folds. What's your streaming schedule now? Should be Thursday to Sunday, dude. Thursday to Sunday-ish. This time of day-ish. Um, yeah. If you could be my friend, what two books about poker would you recommend me from Johnny Millions? It's a good question. Books are often quite outdated, so I don't recommend a lot of poker books for strategy about poker. I think online training material is a lot better. So go with that as we have an overview of the uh, chips here. A little bit of chopping and changing here on our... We have a bit of an overview okay, of the chips. Daniel Divorce. Maybe the most experienced at the table. Maybe that's Michael Soiza. But sitting on the short end, Roberto Romanella after that big pot on 50 big blinds. Michael Delvecchio on 2 million. So yeah, the, like I think online training material is better. I, I'm actually listening to Life's a Gamble by Mike Sexton because I wanted to uh, learn about him a little bit. So I bought it on Audible. It's great, man. It's a really good book. Like I can't believe the amount of things that Mike Sexton has done in his life. I'm not that far into it. I'm a couple hours into it. But it's it's already like I played a bunch of school sports. Uh, I helped run a dance hall. I helped sales. I, I um, <laughs> what was it? Oh, man. I'm blanking on some of it now. Uh, obviously, he was a poker pro. He was in the army. Like, it just so many things that Mike Sexton has done. He's won a World Series of Poker Bracelet. He's the... He was the commentary of the WPT, WPT and the voice of the WPT for a very long time. He's now the chairman of Party Poker. Like, that guy has lived an incredibly full life. You know what I mean? Pretty crazy. Can you find out when Party Poker will be available in Michigan now that online poker is legal again? I can't. H3 mate uh, M3. I wish, dude. I wish I had the deets on that. But I don't think I'm the go-to guy on the timeline for that. Sexton's golf stories in the book are epic. I'm sure you'll appreciate them from Blurred 11s. Yeah, I haven't made it that far yet, but 
I'm looking forward to it, man. Okay. It's gonna be good. It's like Deuce. Is that Peter Eastgate? Nah, bro. Yeah, Daniel Devoris. He's a Canadian, but also a high stakes boss. High stakes boss, man. Chino's gonna go for a bet here, fifty thousand. Action back on Daniel Devoris with this Ace Eight of Clubs. Danny Divorce, I think, makes videos for Run It Once poker. I'm pretty sure, because I've watched some of his content about it. I think. We've definitely played with him online, but he's very, very good at poker. Yeah, Oxada. That's it. So you, you would see him in the 25K onlines and stuff like that. Chino checks, Daniel Devoris with, we can see the best hand here. Also dominating Chino, Chino, but does he continue? Is he better? Is he just trying to show down with the ace eight? Goes check, check, seven on the end. And he's gonna win. I don't know, full circle stopper. I don't know how that works, man. Spicy, uh, sweet chili Doritos are the best. This is barely here. Barely here. I have to be honest, dude, and this is a very controversial opinion because I know a lot of people agree with you. I think they are by far the worst flavor. It's actually the only Dorito that I see. Spicy, sweet chili. It's the only Dorito I see where I actually don't want to eat it. Like, if I see it, I will be like, no, thank you. Please. Keep that away from me. Uh, take it and go. Goodbye. I don't want it. They're trash, man. They're the worst. Sorry. Sorry. They suck, man. They suck big time. Nacho cheese, Cool Ranch, are OP, man. One, two. Then you go for the orange ones. The nacho cheese after that. The orange. I think it goes red, then blue, then orange. Spicy sweet chili, man, is... 15th on the chain and there's only 13 Jerry raises it up with the tens Michael putting in the three bet with tens. That's right. Both players have the same hands to ten the bet. Obviously Jerry doing anything other than calling here. Now both these players are 1.8 million deep here So is this hand gonna be all in or or are we gonna see someone fold the same hand here? You can only buy cheese at Cool and Chili Heat Wave in the UK. I, I've i seen the Cool, but I haven't seen the nacho cheese before. I've only seen the orange, not the red. The red is the best flavor, so I'm really surprised you guys don't have it, to be honest. But All right, so Jerry's going to call to the flop, 495K. Hard to see anyway, this doesn't become a chop. Queen, Jack, eight. Now, someone could fold here, right? We can see Jerry has a slight advantage. He has the backdoor flush draw, but they both have the same hand. Both players probably not thrilled seeing this flop, but both probably not willing to fold yet. It goes check, check. Turn is a deuce of spades. Now, Jerry picks up a flush draw to go along with the same pair of tens. And the percentages are done weird here, but you can see 40% and 40%. That means 80% of the time this is going to be a split, and 20% of the time Jerry's going to win. So Jerry checks. Action back on Michael. Checks again. Three of hearts in the river. All right, I think we're going to get to a showdown here. I think both players are going to chop it up. If it goes bet, we're going to see a call. If it goes check and, and Michael bets, I think Jerry's going to call. Um, if it goes check, check, that's fine too. So I think we're going to chop this up. Yeah, there it is. It had potential to be more crazy, but the flop was anticlimactic, unfortunately. Cool Ranch, yeah. I mean, dude, I have to be honest. I've been a Cool Ranch guy my whole life, but I think I've bumped it down to number two now behind the OG North American red Doritos. Not the spicy sweet chili ones. Terrible, terrible. The nacho cheese red. I need to get a photo just to confirm. OK. 
Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, I can't get a good image for you guys. Let's see. Danny DeVoris and the hijack. Let me. I'm gonna try and. I don't really want to share the New Jersey 101.5 website with you guys, but I guess I'm gonna have to. Right. Okay. Daniel Raiden, the hijack. Ten A Uh, these are trash. These are the worst Doritos possible. I hate them. They're terrible. They don't even have it here, man. They don't even have it here. This is trash. All right. Well, canceled. Canceled. Just wait. I'll find you what you need, fam. I'll find you. And I'll set the record straight. Salsa Verde. I have to be honest, never tried that one. Never tried. Michael, three bets with the Ace King wins. I don't know what happened. Doritos flavors. I'm going to have to search US. It's just going to make life easier. Why is this so difficult to find all the flavors? I don't understand it. There's, a, there's an open market for someone to document all Doritos flavors and put it on Google Images. Because it's not here, man. It's not here. All right, I'm just going to give up on the quest. I've retired from searching. North American red and then blue, which is international. And then orange, which is international. And then that terrible sweet chili heat is the worst of the worst of the worst. That's it. Jamie should get his own show on the Food Network. The passion is there. It's true, man. It is true. <laughs> I do have some passion for food. Chino's going to raise it up under the gun with the Jack-10. It's an aggressive raise, but it's a Chino raise. Danny DeVoris now with the sevens. Is that an all-in or a call? That's a call. Okay. An all-in is an option here, especially against an aggressive player, but he does elect to just call. Action on Michael now. The 10-9 of spades comes along. Um, why is there so many people in this pot? This is too many people in the pot. I don't know how to commentate this now. Roberto Romanello comes along. We're only in the big blinds. And we're still in here. We've got Tony. In the big blind. Now, Tony's a newcomer to the table. Don't know anything about Tony, but he's here. He's here. He's live. Action on Chino. Who's the original racer? Okay. We're down to four. That's fine. That's manageable. Four is a reasonable amount of people. Three, six, seven. seven. Daniel DeVoris has flopped the top set. Michael, American Michael, has a gut shot and a flush draw. But Chino's gonna bet. He's always been an optimistic fellow. He's gonna fire out with Jack Ten and wow. Spade. So what does Daniel Devoris do here? Has top set, loving life, the absolute dream. Draw heavy board. Probably can assume no one has four five because of the positions that people called in. So like he's got the nuts. How does he get the most money? He's got seven hundred twenty thousand back. If he shoves here, he could force some people to fold, which he doesn't want to do with this hand. But he also wants to protect himself. You know what I mean? Now, Michael. 10 nine of spades, gut shot, two over cards, and flush draw. And he covers both players. So if I'm Michael in this situation, I can see the whole cards. But if I'm Michael, I'm just going to raise. Like, I'll just like, okay, if anyone wants to gamble, I'll gamble with you. Let's get the money in. Now, we can see it's bad timing. He's going to run into top set. Uh, he's not doing very well against top set. He has about one-third chance of winning. But he doesn't know that he's up against top set. Yeah, that's not a for sure thing. So here's a raise up to 530,000. Danny DeVoris shoves all in. And a call. Here it is. Not the hand Daniel wanted to see. <laughs> you can see. You can see a little like. Good one favorite. All right. So there it is. 66% for the top set. Daniel DeVoris. Michael 
needs uh, any of those spades or an eight or 11 ounce. Is it 12 ounce? 11 ounce. Ace of clubs of the turn. 10 ounce now. Right, because the paired board. I remember now the paired board. Deuce of hearts on the, air, on the end. There it is. Daniel Divorce is going to get a full double up and then some actually with the extra chips in the pot. So really big win for him. I'm guessing the best player at the table right now or or plays the highest stakes or maybe the most experienced. I don't know. It's tough to say, but yeah, you know, good good hometown Canadian kid just like myself, man. You got to root for the guy. Come on, Daniel. Let's go, man. Nice sweat, indeed. Got to root for the Canadian for sure. I can just see it, you know? I can see home. Now, this Tony felon, Telly F Tony Filoni? Is it Tony Filoni? Is that the name? I love it if it is. Tony Filoni? Or is it Filone? Either way, the table demeanor, I'm intimidated. I have to be honest, I'm intimidated by it. Tony Filoni has a serious vibe going on. The hoodie, the glasses. There, there's just a vibe that's got me on edge, man. I'm on edge. Michael's going to raise it up under the gun. Plus two to 65,000. What's up, Ezex Real? What's up, what's up? Michael is quite experienced as well. Which Michael? Oh, this Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we've established that. Played in the Triton High Rollers, so a very high-stakes player. Action on Tony Filoni. King of Spades, four of clubs. You guys getting the vibe? Like, look at the eyeballs looking around like, I'm on edge, man. Tony's got a table demeanor. He's got a presence. Yeah, it just looks like it's got creases all in it. Yeah, it's on you, by the way. In this okay. Video. Can you look at that one? Right. Yeah, it's because you're, you're peeling your cards too aggressively. Yeah. Me? Yeah, for sure. Your fingernail. I don't have any nails, bro. I mean, the cards are stiff, so they don't flex. <sighs> oh, Gino <laughs> defending Ace <laughs> 10 from the big. Look at how he squeezes cards. Everyone like blames almost, me for uh, everything, anyways. I'm used to it. Yeah. I mean, I'm being serious. <laughs> uh, you can have a look. Why always me? Okay. I mean, I don't pay for the deck, so. I check. Through. Okay. That one. All right, man. I'm just trying to get the vibe of what's going on here. Chino's got the best hand, but does Chino get to show it down? American Michael's going to go for the bets. Chino calls quickly. Boom. Just like that. I don't know. Let's see what Tony does before we get scared. Yeah, I'm not scared. I'm just going to protect myself, Gridlock. I'm on edge in that, like, I'm paying attention, you know? I'm paying attention. Tony Filoni is probably like just a great guy. I d I see, see it's spelled F E L O N E. So I don't think it's actually Tony Filoni, but it is funny to say Tony Filoni. It's probably Filone or something. I don't know. And just with the table demeanor, with the hood up, with the glasses low, you know, like the hood up, it's just looking out the side. Tony Filoni, you gotta keep, you gotta keep your eyes open for a Tony Filoni. We're on no delay. What's up, Danny? Eight seven eight seven eight. Welcome to the stream. If you guys are just tuning in, this is the Caribbean Poker Party ten thousand three hundred dollar buy-in. We are on no delay, me and you. But this has already happened in the world. Don't worry. If you haven't seen it, I haven't seen it either. This is news to all of us. You can pretend it's live because it basically is. You didn't know what happened. Neither did I. It's fine. But this did happen in November. We're just doing a re-commentary here. Roberto Romanello, legend Roberto of the game, Party Poker Pro, is going to raise it up to 75K. In Michael in the cutoff with King Queen. He's raising it up. Michael. Tony Filoni's got a, cape, a face cover as well. What is that strat? Huh. Very dominated king queen. Couple of seats down. Interesting. 
So Michael has a bit of an interesting spot here. Do I three bets? Or do I just call and risk going like multi-way with king-queen offsuit, which isn't a great hand to go multi-way with. So I think a three bet is reasonable sometimes, and uh, that's what happens here. So I think this is a good play sometimes. Not every time, but sometimes. Action now on Tony Filoni, looking down at 925,000. And just folds. Roberto, of course, going to have to fold. Roberto Romanello is just loving life, living the dream. Ace King suited. Three bet from an aggressive high stakes player. You love your life. You just how do I print money, basically? How quickly can I get the money here? <coughs> Roberto's going to trap here with some hands, but Ace King suited is certainly not one you want to trap with. This is just a good hand to move all in. There's the shove. That's what he does. Roberto's all in. Mike Fortune quick Michael folds. Lays. And that's it. Yeah, chosen a pretty good hand and a pretty good spot to come out with a three bet. Just didn't work. Roberto. He's ducking whilst Roberto is diving. Is this live live? This is not happening right now in the Caribbean. But me and you, me talking to you, that's happening right now. Although if you're re-watching this in the future, it might not be now. So it's really tough to say, you know? It's tough to say if it's live. I can't tell you for sure. <laughs> Daniel DeVoris now, top of the leaderboard, 1.9 million. Roberto Romanello on 1.6. Jerry Wong on 1.8. Chino Ream in fourth place on this leaderboard. The current date is January 30th. The date this was played is November or something. Lines 20k, 40k with a 40k ante. I was going to say, I thought I saw this one. Yeah, if you watched it on Poker Go, you would have seen it. That's where it originally was broadcast. If you don't have a Poker Go subscription, then you probably haven't seen it. You might have seen like clips or something. So that's why we're doing it here. Tony Filoni. To give it a pass. Man, I like this Tony Filoni guy. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Mm, Michael yawned and I yawned, man. It's tough to avoid the yawn when you see it. Coach Reem. Gino Reem is there, dude. A guy that, in my poker career, has had a very controversial um, existence in the poker world, for sure. You know, it's I really don't know where I stand on that because Gino Reem is pretty famous you know, like six, seven years ago or something, maybe even the last five years ago, for owing a ton of people money in the poker world. So he had an extremely negative image when that happened. Now, I've never met him in person um, before. Well, I did meet him at the World Series. I told him good luck one time. Like when my first year at the World Series, I saw him walking by. And he's a big name in the poker world, right? Um, he was kind of like all the news and all the rage in the poker world back then. But I don't know really, I don't know. I'm not sure if I should hold a grudge because of what Michael, other people have experienced with not getting paid back from him or being in debt to him, or if I shouldn't. I don't really know. But there's like an asterisk by his name to some people in the way that he's acted in the poker world. I don't know if there is for me. I guess I'll just reserve judgment and just keep watching poker hands. I, I Maybe I don't have to have an opinion on it, you know what I mean? Xavier, but why? What's up, my friend? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the kind words. Pay with the straight draw. Just ten with spelled as also. Interesting, Michael. Stab Michael with the open ender and the jack high. This is a good hand to bluff, right? You're not going to win with jack high. So you might as well off. bluff. You have outs if your bluff gets caught. Now we can see he's up against a really bad hand. A seven. Right, well, <laughs> it's not a good hand to see. Thankfully for Michael, though, uh, they are going to chop it up here on the end. They both have a straight. Decent percentage of the time, Tuna has an ace here. Rec Bang. Seen his older photos and he looks so different today. Chino, I mean. Yeah. 
he's going to overbet Jam. Jam and a call. Jam and a call. An overbet jam, but probably things like, hey, I block the high end of the straight, and I also have a straight myself. But he doesn't block the high end of the straight with the jack. He needs the 10. Yeah. Welcome back, Poker Staples. Thanks, Axiom Fox. What's up? Very glad to see you feeling better. Yeah, me too. I feel good today, man. Feel good. Feel fresh. Excited to be back on Twitch streaming up a storm, man. It's all good. Good to see you back as well, my friend. <coughs> Shaved is like minus 70% toughness. True. Everyone looks like a baby face when you're shaved, man. That's what I've learned. <laughs> Tony Filoni. Got a decision to make here. Under the gun, plus two. Thinking about it. It's going to let it pass. All right. It's fold from the Tony Filoni. Chino in the hijack. The king four. Gives it up. Jerry folds as well. On to Daniel Devoris on the button with the 10 nine of diamonds. And you're on the button, 10 out of diamonds. That's what I just said. <laughs> Raises it up to 80,000. Roberto in the big blind of the queen seven gives it up. Okay. All right. Okay. Guys, how how is Galfon doing today, by the way, in the Galfon challenge? I am enjoying sweating the challenge because I, I really like Phil. I think he's great. You know, I don't work for his site or anything. And I'm, you know, in a, in a way competing against this site, right, with Party Poker. But I do enjoy sweating the challenge, and I hope he does well. So let me know if you know how that challenge is going for him today. <clears throat> fold in the fold onto Chino with the 10 of spades mystery it's a fold Jerry is going to fold as well Daniel folds now on Michael on the button he's, he's been very active this tournament but he's had a lot of good hands as well he's down 400 at the moment okay he's down like a 20 or 30k today or something Michael raising from the button. I can pull it up as well but I don't want to Oh, down 74 oh, today. Damn. Blind. Damn, damn, damn. All right. So well, cool. good luck to him. Standard Michael side. raises. Roberto is going to call for 80,000. Arthur now in the big. Going to call as well. Our first hand for Arthur. Welcome to the table, Arthur. Welcome, welcome. Is this final table or just feature table? Sorry about the caps. No problem, Hefto. It's cool, man. This is just the feature table. This is day two of coverage of the Caribbean Poker Party 10, 10K. 6, 7, uh, 12, 13, we've done day 1A and day 1B on this channel, so this is day two. We're going through the whole tournament, man. The whole thing. We're getting the whole story. So there's still quite a ways to go until uh, we have a champion, but at least there'll be some interesting poker anyways, some interesting hands. Uh, thank you. Thanks for the reminder, Dr. Sprinkles. So, Arthur has a pair of sixes. Michael has missed. Roberto has a gut shot. This bet... I don't know if I like this bet from Michael. It may work. Because <laughs> we can see both players are like really close to something decent. But not quite something decent. Roberto is going to go for the raise here. Which I love. That's usually a good option if you've got a hand where you just don't, you can't quite call, you don't quite like it. We'll just consider bluffing those, you know? That's what we see. Yo, Red Dog, thanks for following the channel, man. Thank you. 
Roberto Reyes takes it down. Look at that, man. What a boss. The Welsh wizard. Roberto. Welsh wizard is actually a guy on uh, Twitter I see all the time. So I probably can't. No, that's elf wizard. Welsh wizard works, man. Do people call Roberto Romanello the Welsh wizard? Or did I just make that up? That's his party screen name. I didn't make it up. I knew I couldn't. No one has that skill off the dome, man. Of course I didn't make it up. Welsh wizard. That's it. Pulls around to Michael in the cutoff with the ace jack of spades. Raise it up to 80k. Michael in the cutoff, raising it once again, this time with ace, jack of spades. And Soiza, the last man to get through in the big blind, queen three off. The minimum raise. So he is is there any strings you can pull to get some extra turnies in the KO series between 22 and 44? Only 7 22s over the whole series. Definitely can't on that one. Because I know that with it already being announced and already added to the tournament schedule and the satellite schedule is already released, like I'm extremely well, certain that that schedule is final. Um, solo. So Your best chance of getting that heard is going to be in the Party Poker Live chat. So you can go to Party Poker Live, you can make an account there, and you can uh, you can paste it in tournament feedback. But I just know from past experience of series at Party Poker and, and on Stars when I was watching by them that like... When tournament series come out and they're added to the lobby, it's extremely unlikely to have changes made after that. But uh, yeah, KO series does start on Sunday. It'll be worth looking at at the schedule for for Sunday as well, and just see when we're gonna start playing. You know what high stakes stuff we're gonna play. We'll be playing quite a quite a few big tournaments over the next two weeks, so it should be fun. Thanks, Jamie. Already did that. Then you you put in the best spot to be heard, man. For sure. Hello, Vic G04. What's up, my friend? Welcome. Welcome, welcome to the channel. Jerry's going to raise it up with a king queen under the gun. Plus one. Jerry, of course, raise it up to 80. Michael, another ace this time. Ace 10 in the hijack. Michael now. And just under 30 picks. With the ace 10, it's a, it's a hand, it's but it's not very fun to play this one post-flop, especially multi-way. So I actually like the three bet. I'd be surprised if Michael three bets and then calls an all in here. To me, if you're going to three bet this hand, you're going to fold to a shove. Um... But you're okay when it goes to a flop as well. So let's see how Jerry elects to play this. Do you have any thoughts on Isildur 1, Victor Blum? I mean, legend of the game, dude. A legend of online Jerry poker. Online poker would not be the same without him. You know what I mean? An incredible impact. In, in terms of these days, I don't really know what he's up to. I don't know if he's still playing or how he's doing or whatever. But And Jerry's going to fold the king-queen. He did fold the worst hand. If he would have known his opponent's hand, of course he would have played. You know, he's got enough chance to hit something, but I think a fold is fine too, and Michael picks up the chips. When are they adding in the all-in percentages? Heard you say before it was supposed to come back in an update a while back. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what the update is with that, buddy boss, 93. Because the last I heard as well was that it was being added as like a software update, so I'm surprised that it's not there. I don't know, man. I'll let you know if I hear. Daniel DeVore is going to look down at the Queen Nine of Hearts, which is a close hand as to whether you want to play it or not. 
Somewhat connected. He's under the gun plus one. Daniel fits big blind. One of my favorite things in live poker is when people are in conversation, they look down at a hand that they play, the slow transition from their face in, in conversation to how it's going to be when they play the hand. Because, like, you could be having a friendly conversation like this, right, chat? Like, okay, we're having a conversation. This is good. This is good. This is great. Whatever. And then it's just like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Look down. Daniel's raise gets around to Tony in the small. He's going to fold King Boo Suit, surely, and that can leave Chino the last. You know, that transition is so awkward. If you're playing poker, so awkward, man. What do you do? It's a weird one. It's one of my favorite things to watch on live streams because it's just, there's no way to make it look cool. You do, you can't do it immediately, but it happens. You just have to keep smiling throughout the hand. See, that's the thing. That, that's forced as well, though, man. That's forced as well. Tony Filoni in the small blind is getting involved, dude. King Deuce of Spades getting involved in the small blind. There has been some times at the table that I've been like very tempted to just just like give her one of these, you know? Just like, okay, I'm gonna shut down because I'm gonna play this hand. You know what I mean? Tony checks. Tony checks. Action back on Daniel. Uh Poker Chef Jeff, what's up, man? Great. Glad to hear that, dude. Glad it's going well. I'll have to check it out sometime. So Daniel's going to continue betting here. Tony Filoni. This is a random call from Tony. It's just kind of out of the blue, but I really love the character. I wish we had more Tony Filonis because it's just... Uh, he's just involved. He's in there, man. The hoodie, the glasses. I like it. He's not going to win the pot. The King Deuce, I wouldn't do that again, Tony. That wouldn't be my strat there, man. But hey. You do you, playa. We enjoy watching it. We are on day two. The third day of play here in this Caribbean Poker Party 10,000 main event. This happened in November 2019. We are streaming it live right now. December 30th. No, January 30th. We time traveled a month just a second ago. January 30th. So we're going to do about half of day two here, I think. We're going to play a little bit of online poker tonight, get some reps in, get ready for the KO series, which is coming next week. Um, and yeah, go from there. Jamie, I have a question for you. Is it possible to contact you for autograph requests? Yes, Vic G. Um, pokerstaples at gmail.com. I'll put it in the chat for you. You can send me an email there. There you go. Send me an email. If it's for a friend or whatever. We'll figure it out. Chino Reem in the small blind. Looking down at pocket threes. Has 1.3 million. So threes is like, Action you've got a pair. Chino. Pairs are good. But you know what isn't fun with a pair? Being 33 big blinds deep out of position. And Chino just goes for the jam here. This is a big jam. Big gem. Has 33 big blinds. That's a lot in the small blind. But, it, you know, it's because of just the awkwardness of a tiny pair out of position on those stacks. It's not very fun to play at all. I don't think it's optimal. Like, I wouldn't choose to shove there. I think there's better choices, but it's very likely profitable, and there it is. Jeff Gross still in. I'm not sure if he was at this point. I don't know. I know Jeff didn't win the tournament. Spoilers. Unfortunately, would have been great. But I don't know if he was in at this point in the tournament. Michael looks down at Jack Nine suited under the gun. Is going to raise it up. Same pretty aggressive here. Arthur. He's been pretty tight. Arthur's been pretty snug, but he just hasn't had very many hands. Tony Filoni. 
is going to fold the 7-5. Action on Chino Ream now. On the button with the ace, eight of diamonds. Not going to fold. Is going to play. Michael raising under the gun. Jack nine of spades. Chino peels on the bum. Ace Danny divorce in the big blunt. Ace of clubs, three of spades. Now this is a bit of an interesting one with ace three because it's not It's not a great hand to play multi-way post-flop out of position. But then again, Danny divorce has got to feel like he's ha he has a decent edge here as well. So I don't know. Uh, what he'll like to do. He does call. A spot worthy of consideration. Holding an ace blocker. Chino doesn't have that many strong hands flashing the button. Chino Ream. Flopping the dream, dude. The absolute dream. Michael's going to continuation bet with the Jack 9 of 100,000, but we can see Chino has trip eights. Comes along for the call. Daniel Devoris now in the big blind. Actually has a pair of threes. Now, he has a bet and a call in front of him, which isn't very fun. You know, like, he might have the best hand now, but what happens on a turn bet? You pretty much always have to fold to a turn bet, so it's a bit awkward for Daniel Devoris here. If the hand ended now, let's say there was a rule where there could be no bets in the turn in the river, he would certainly call. But it's the fact that he's out of position to that turn action that makes him have to fold. Turn is a seven of clubs. This could spell danger for Michael. Seven of spades would be worse, obviously, but he's picked up a draw here to go along with uh, his jack high. <laughs> his nothing, but he checks. Okay, it looks like he's going to give up. Chino, action on him. Goes for a bet. Excuse me. not really see him proceeding here. He may have barreled a second time, but... Wow, he's gone the other way. He checked jams. Wow. He went for the check jam. Try to induce Chino to bet with his floats. And then what happened? The turn. Michael checked jammed and Chino play, just snapped. To run into it here. This time Chino actually has it. And just as I wow. Said, you Chino ream, you get paid off more than most. Barring a miracle. We'll be up to wow. Three million. Really don't want you to, bro. Nothing personal. 10 ball for Carnage. Just for Carnage, man. For Carnage's sake. Six isn't going to do it. GG to Michael, who is out of the tournament. 2.7 million pot going over to Chino Ream. That's some damage. Like, Chino can do some action with that stack, man. That's what happens when you're such an aggressive player. And, uh, and he flop trips. People just go wild for it, man. That is crazy. Tough one for Michael. American Michael there. And uh, we lost another player. Nice pot for Chino. It's going to be dangerous now. That's pretty wild, man. All right. Well, hopefully we get a new player in. Chips are absolutely flying here on day two. Chips are flying. They're all over the place, man. Arthur under the gun. Hasn't hit a hand yet, man. Hasn't had something playable yet. Hold on, poker. We're not at the final table. This is day two coverage, actually. So there's quite a ways to go for these players to get to the final table. Michael, Five. now raise from plus one. Chino gonna call with 10 out of diamonds. Raise from Michael. Chino calls for 90K. Whoa, we got some bits. We got some bits coming in. Vic G04 dropping the 100 bits. Thank you very much. Got to go to sleep. I'll see you later. And thank you, Jamie. Of course. Of course. Thanks for the 100 bits. Bit load of the day. Have a good rest. Roberto checks. Action on Michael now, who has flopped the top pair. Chino has missed. Roberto has the bottom end of the straight draw. Michael's got the top pair. 
elects to control the size of the pot with the queen jack, which I don't mind. He's got nothing to worry about here, we can see, but he doesn't know that. Turn is the ace of clubs. This is a really bad card for Michael. He doesn't like to see this. We know he still has the best hand, but I expect this pot to stay small. Probably a check, check, check. Yep. Check, check, check. River is a seven. Roberto Romanello with the straight. Three, four, five, six, seven. Best hand. Now, can he get a call from Michael here? Can he get a bet and a call? Chino's going to be no help to him. So he's got to hope for a call from Michael. He's gone big, 400k, but neither Quick folds. And a quick fold. That's it. A really big bet from Roberto. 400,000. That's a lot. That's a lot of chips. Quite a few chips there, Roberto. I'd like to see Roberto perhaps go for a different size than there. He has all the strong hands having flat from the big blind. His opponents have very weak ranges by the river. I need to get this back to full screen so you guys don't see my icons at the bottom. But on the flip side, it's nice to have some hands you're going to bet big with. Nice to be able to bluff big. Mike under the gun, looking down at 10-8 of clubs. This is decent, man. It's a playable hand for sure. But folds. Because of position. You know, and I don't blame him too, because this table so far has been very aggressive. That's always my takeaway from live poker tournaments, man. When I when I play live poker tournaments and I've come from playing online, even against online guys. There's just a higher level of aggression. like, And I think it's because of how slow live poker is. You know, you have to be so much more patient. And and it's like you can see people in person. So there's always this leveling of like people getting crazy and, you know, doing moves like bet, three bet, like we just saw, you know, or the check raise jam on the turn. And I just don't think you have to. I think you just straightforward ABC and collect the chips in, in a lot of these spots. Um. So, long story short, I don't blame the 10 of clubs for folding because action tends to just kind of be crazy. Daniel raising queen and jack of diamonds. No delay. This was filmed in 2019, lol. Bluffing 420S. No delay between me and you, my friend. My channel's always on a delay, so I think that's the pertinent issue. But uh, I hear what you're saying, dude. It is in the title. Caribbean Poker Party 2019, day two. But I think the important part is me and you can talk in real time, which is very different from my normal channel where we have to wait four minutes to see if you saw my comment. You know what I mean? Thank you. Yeah, forgot. Thank you. 7676 Queen Jack here. Daniel DeVoris with the best of it on the dealer button. And in position. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Now, I'm curious as to whether he goes to a, for a bet or not. Yeah, taking the time and checking it around for Daniel. Because her ha his hand is not particularly vulnerable here. He has backdoor diamonds. Um, I mean, the standard play is going to be to bet because you're going to have a lot of bluffs that want to bet here too. But I was curious if he wouldn't might he wouldn't mix in a check back sometimes as well. So I'm not sure. Because it's not such a bad hand to do it with. But maybe a hand like... Queen Jack yeah, would be a little a bit better to do it with than. No, that's what he has. He has Queen Jack. No, Daniel. this is the best hand to check He's back. <laughs> Jack. Hope you get paid well for this gig. I get paid nothing for doing this commentary, but uh, no. Nah, but I'm sponsored by Party Poker, right? So I I am getting paid, but like no one asked me to do this. It was just my idea, because I thought people would like it. So I'm not getting paid for for like doing this commentary specifically. But uh, it's enjoyable, man. It's fun. Like, I feel like I learn watching these great players. Um, learn how they're playing. Learn how they're thinking about spots. Queen. Another good card for Daniel DeVoris. Roberto is drawing dead here. Has nothing that can help him. I guess like 5-8, right? It says 0%, but he has runner-runner 5-8. Or runner-runner 5-3, right? Yeah. So it's not 0%. I don't know why it says 0. Miscalculation. 
Yeah, my my whole thinking with um with doing the live poker commentary is that there's a lot more live poker I'm fans sorry, than man. online poker fans. So if I can start to do some of these to start my stream, gather some of those people that understand live poker and then show them online poker, I might be able to be more helpful. You know what I mean? It's zero percent. Seven six of hearts against Queen Jack. No. Oh yeah, there's only one card to come. Right, 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 right. You guys are right, chat. Okay. Right, there's only one card to come. I understand. <laughs> I thought there was two. I thought we were playing uh, River Plus. Flop turn River River Plus, man. Have you guys never played that? This is the most common game of poker. Flop turn River River Plus. Just runner runner five eight. Okay. You're right, chat. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. This is. Daniel's got to try and. I'm embarrassed. Get some value here from a I'm embarrassed. <laughs> you can't run a runner with one card left. I've learned today. You've taught me. All of you have taught me. Well, okay. Roberto gives up. Roberto gives it up. Daniel Devoris takes it down with the Queen Jack. Bad timing for Roberto. Doesn't necessarily mean the move was bad, but it is bad timing because he he did have zero percent. True story.